Here's our second example of integration by parts. We have the integral of t squared times e to the t dt. So I've thrown in the variable t instead of x, but that doesn't really change anything. What we're going to start with is the same way we started our first example. We recognize that this is the product of two functions. So we have t squared and we have e to the t. And one of those is going to be part of u and one of them is going to be part of dp. Now we'll use the trick we talked about with lipd. One of these, t squared, is a polynomial. The other one, e to the t, is exponential. So we have t squared here, and we have e to the t here. And if you remember, the ones that come earlier in the list are the ones that we'll set up as u, and the ones that come later in the list we'll set as dv. So we're just arranging them in order and seeing which one comes first. So we'll decide that u is t squared, and dv is e to the t, and the dt, or dx, always goes with dv. Now, like we did last time, we just have to find the remaining two pieces, du and v. du, we take the derivative of u, and that gives us 2t dt. For v, we have to integrate dv, so we get e to the t. So far, so good. No big issues yet. Now we can apply this formula, the integral of u times dv equals u times v minus the integral of v times du. Okay, we can plug our pieces in. We have this integral we started with equals u, that's t squared, times v, that's e to the t, minus the integral of v, that's e to the t, times du, so that would be 2t e to the t dt. And if you need to pause here and double check that substitution and make sure everything makes sense, feel free to do so. Okay, so now we've taken this integral we couldn't do, and now we've got an integral we can do, right? Can we do that integral? 2t times e to the t? It's not one of the basic forms, and it doesn't look like u substitution will work. So are we stuck or do we have something we can do now? If you look closely you may already be seeing that we could try using integration by parts again. Now that sounds kind of hopeless that we're trying the same thing again but if you notice what happened we went from a problem with t squared to now doing a problem with just t. And if you project forward and you kind of think about what's going to happen, it may be clear to you that when we do this again with the same setup, we're going to drop off that t because we'll take the derivative of that piece. And so then we'll finally have one that we know the answer for immediately. So there are times like this where you have to use integration by parts multiple times, often two times. Three times or more would be kind of stretching it too, uh, too difficult of a problem, but the most complicated piece of this is just keeping all your parts straight, including these negative signs. The negative signs are going to be the thing that will trip you up the most, because it's easy to forget to distribute one or mess that up somewhere. So be very careful with those negative signs, and I'll show you how I kind of arrange this to keep things straight. So rather than taking this problem off on the side and doing it by itself, I like to keep everything in this same uh, line here. So we'll do another integration by parts where we have u. Again, u is going to be the part with t, and dv is going to be e to the t, dt. Now one quick note, I could have put the 2 on either part. It really doesn't matter. It would have just kind of carried through from one to the other anyway. So I just decided to stick it with the T because that's where it stands right now. But the two could get moved around without causing any issues. So then we need to calculate DU, which is going to be 2DT, and V, which is still E to the T. Okay, so now I need a little more space because I'm going to have to write the whole thing. Our original problem equals t squared e to the t, that's from the first integration by parts application. 
minus, and then I'm going to need a big set of brackets, and I'm going to replace all of this, which is u dv in this new setup, with u times v minus the integral of v times du. So again, if you need to pause and check that substitution and see what's happening here. But what's happening is I have this whole problem is the integration by parts formula where I have uv minus the integral of v du. But then that integral of v du gets replaced into a second application of the formula where now I have this second uv minus the integral of v du. So you got to watch out for these things especially as I mentioned this negative sign, make sure you put brackets around the whole thing so that this negative distributes correctly. That's the easiest thing to forget to do on these problems. So just as long as you're careful and you keep all your um, components organized, this isn't too bad. It's a little bit tedious, but the actual process is very straightforward and each step is pretty quick. So it might be helpful now to distribute. <clears throat> so I have t squared e to the t. <clears throat> minus 2t e to the t plus the integral of 2 e to the t dt. And then the last step is just to do that integral, which is very straightforward. It's just 2 e to the t, of course, plus c. And there's our final answer for the whole problem. So this is our second example of integration by parts and the complication on this one is that we had to use integration by parts twice but that's a relatively common necessity to use integration by parts multiple times but as long as you're careful with selecting u and dv it shouldn't pose too much problem and just remember to be careful with minus signs and things like it.